Um, thank you so much, Jenny, um, for your time today and for agreeing to spend time um, with us. I've got a list of questions for here. Some of them we've put together and some of them have been sent in by Every Australian Counts uh, supporters. So thanks for your time. Great to be here. Uh, your office gets lots of calls from people uh, with disability who are having sure trouble do. with the NDIS. What's the most common problems you hear about? Mostly frustration that people can't get the National Disability Insurance Agency to respond in a timely way. So whether it's um, that they can't get through on the phone, they can't get their emails answered, they can't get their planning appointments, uh, they can't get their review done on time, um, that they have they've got their plan and it doesn't reflect what they thought was going to be in their plan. Um, unfortunately, we've had too many of those. And then there's all the IT problems, uh, which there's been an absolute multitude. So generally, it's just uh, people who are very, very frustrated with uh, how long they have to wait for a whole range of things. And so what do you think should be done to fix them? Uh, there's just not enough staff. Uh, so that's the first thing that has to change. Uh, this Conservative government imposed a cap on staffing on the National Disability Insurance Agency. Uh, so people have to wait to get their phones answered or their emails answered or get their plans done on time. Um, if you don't have enough staff, you can't do the job. So as the Productivity Commission recommended in their recent review, the staffing cap should be lifted and that should be done as a matter of urgency. That really is uh, the most important thing to do straight away. The second is to fix the problems with the IT system. Um, I, I suppose for me, one of the most distressing things has been the way in which the IT system and the way that's being created has um, really determined the nature of the National Disability Insurance Scheme in a way that none of us wanted. Uh, it's made it very bureaucratic and um, so it's not only the delays of delays with people getting their money, providers and people with disability, um, all sorts of technical problems which I know still exist. Uh, but it's also the way in which that's influenced the culture and I think that's been, well, for many people, quite devastating. Mm -hmm. um, so they're the kinds of problems that you hear about from people who get in touch with you, but what do you think some of the biggest challenges are facing the NDIS? Well, as I say, the biggest thing I think is this cultural problem. Um, when we were designing it right at the start, it was supposed to be about the individual. That was the thing that was driving us all to make sure that people with disability and their families and carers could have a better life. And the last thing we want is a really bureaucratic system. So uh, if, if we're to make sure that it honours the original promise, we have to um, make sure that this bureaucratic culture is changed and I think that's possible. Uh, it will re re require a whole range of um, things to be changed uh, including the IT system but uh, also the, just the whole approach has to be uh, focused on the individual rather than um, this bureaucratic culture. It's very frustrating to us. Some people with disability um, feel that they're worse off mm. under the NDIS. Some people are wondering why we fought so hard mm -hmm. for something that hasn't made things better. When people say that to you, what do you say back to them? Well, first of all, we try to um, look at the detail of what's happening to them personally mm. uh, to try and fix it because, of course, nobody should be worse off. That, that is just wrong. Mm. Um, so that's I, I take a very practical approach to that. Uh, they can't be left worse off. We've got to make sure that they're better off. Uh, and it is the case, of course, that for many, many people, they are better off. Um, it might have been frustrating to get there. Uh, it mightn't have happened as quickly as we would like it to happen. But I, I am every day um, being told of wonderful stories, uh, a lot locally, of course. Um, uh, I ran into a lady just on the street outside when she had a companion dog and uh, she now is able to 
deal with her anxiety and her uh, the issues that come from her disability in a much better way because she's getting supports that she never got before. I've got another friend also lives locally. Uh, they've never ever had any support at all, even though one of their children is uh, has very severe disabilities. Um, as we know, we all remember the uh, original Productivity Commission inquiry. The old system was broken. It wasn't delivering to people. I know so many people who just got nothing uh, under the old state system. And now uh, some of these people just can't believe it. They're finally, uh, instead of having to get up uh, 12 times a night, you know, to deal with uh, a child that's uh, fitting um, and all the things that come from that, they, they can actually have someone that comes to the house and helps and, um, you know, just changes their lives. So uh, there are so many great stories, but you're right, there are people um, who have found that they're worse off and that is just unacceptable. But that can be worked, that's got to be worked through and it can't be left that, that way. Mm -hmm. You are the minister responsible for introducing the NDIS. When you see how things are going now, how do you feel about it? Um, frustrated, <laughs> probably is the mm -hmm. um, most um, uh, common response. So this bureaucratic issue, uh, that I mentioned before, but think of all the other things that unfortunately, because we haven't had, you know, I, I, I don't mean to be political about it, but honestly, you've got to drive a big reform. You have to have the energy and desire to see this happen and to make it a success. And if you don't have a minister that's actually really determined to do that and to really drive it, then all the things that need to be done to make it a success, don't get done. So we know that this is uh, the National Disability Insurance Scheme is going to create the largest numbers of new jobs. Fantastic for Australia, fantastic for people with disability, but where's the workforce strategy? Where, where are we uh, making sure that people are encouraged to go into working in the disability field? Where's the work going on to make sure that the jobs are good jobs? Uh, People with disability don't want the workers to be shortchanged, mm -hmm. and of course the workers shouldn't be shortchanged. So, but where is that strategy? It doesn't exist. Uh, as you would know, well, housing is a huge issue. I, I have been banging this drum for years, and still we've got this huge frustration. Uh, we know the money is there in the National Disability Insurance Scheme to spend on housing. Um, the, the whole, the government and the agency have just been so slow at making that happen. We hear story after story of people not being able to, they get their plan, they get the money in the plan, but they can't find the services because nobody's been out there really encouraging the um, uh, creation of new services through market development. So they're just some of the areas that are desperately uh, needed to um, to make it a success but you've, you've got to have the drive from the top and um, unfortunately yeah, we just haven't seen that. So we've had some really great uh, questions from our supporters. Um, lots of people wanted to ask us about two issues in particular, the issue of respite and the issue of housing and supported accommodation. What do you think needs to be done in these two areas? Yeah. So, and I hear that too, um, all over the place. Probably I hear a few more <laughs> than just those two issues. But um, on respite, the thing that um, I would want to see in respite is many, many more options. So um, not just uh, can I have somebody come to my house and uh, have uh, the care and support provided at home or alternatively go into some form of institution. Um, so there's a whole range of different ways in which people want to be able to have a break. They might want to go to the beach, for example, or you know the things that the rest of us like to do to have a break. Um, so I just think, once again, there needs to be a much greater engagement with people with disability and carers about 
the whole range of different ways in which respite can um, mm -hmm. um, take place. Where are the ideas? You know, drive it, drive, drive the so solutions rather than um, uh, just expect it somehow to happen. On housing, uh, as I said before, I just find this really frustrating because we've been, uh, real, I've been saying to the department and to the agency, uh, myself in government and even in opposition, uh, where are the options, where are the financing options, where are the um, deals you're doing with developers, uh, how are you making this happen? And um, once again, just story after story of how frustrating it is. Um, so just get on with it. I think our supporters would say the same thing. Mm. Um, we have to ask you about funding mm. for the scheme. The bill to increase the Medicare levy uh, to fund the NDIS is stuck in the Senate at the moment. And people with disability and their families are getting more and more worried the longer that this drags on. They want to know that funding for the set for the scheme is secure. Um, will you increase the Medicare levy to help pay for the scheme? Well first and foremost the scheme is secure. Uh, it always has been right from the start. It's been fully funded. It is fully funded now. So uh, this is actually something that as you know makes me very angry uh, and I think the government has uh, really being totally irresponsible in the way in which they have dealt with this issue uh, and have played politics with uh, people with disability in, the, in, in a very, very um, cruel way. So we funded the National Disability Insurance Scheme from the start. We did increase the Medicare levy. We also made a lot of other very difficult decisions. Uh, means testing the private health insurance rebate, increasing the excise on tobacco and, and so on. <clears throat> All of which were designed to make sure that the budget uh, had the money to uh, fund the National Disability Insurance Scheme in full, at full scheme. So that money is in the budget. If the government says it's not, what have they spent it on? Uh, I actually think it is in the budget um, because the government has actually signed agreements, bilateral agreements with the states and territories and um, I, I think that's been a good thing um, and I'm particularly pleased Western Australia is in, so that's great. Um, those agreements are signed. Governments don't sign intergovernmental agreements if the money is not in the bank to pay their contributions. So the money is in the budget for the National Disability Insurance Scheme. So that's the first thing. People do not need to be worried about that. The second thing is, yes, there is a need to, uh, to of course, continually make sure there's enough money in the budget for all the things that uh, we all need governments to um, address. And so we have said, Labor has said, that we will support an increase to the Medicare levy for people who earn over $87,000 uh, and we'll also keep on what was called the deficit levy, so uh, increase that extra amount for the top income earners. Together, those two things that Labor wants to do would actually raise more than uh, the government increasing the Medicare levy on everybody. Uh, so we think it's a fairer way to go, so it puts extra tax on those who can better afford to pay uh, and protects the low income earners. Uh, the government wants to uh, put more of the pressure on lower income earners, uh, take the deficit levy off the top, which we think is unfair. Uh, so the question is which is the fairer way to raise this extra money for the budget uh, ours is def definitely a fairer way and it ra actually raises a little bit more money. Um, but the important point to emphasise is that the National Disability Insurance Scheme is fully funded, always has been, and certainly under Labor, always will be. People with disability and families are frustrated that with all the attention on the NDIS, other issues for people with disability seem to have fallen um, off the agenda. 
Um, there are people with disability who aren't eligible for the scheme and there are still people with disability who are having problems with other systems like yeah. health or education. You are the minister who is responsible for the national disability strategy. What do you think are the most important areas the government needs to focus on to improve outcomes for people with disability? Well, you're right. It's completely fallen off the agenda. And frankly, once again, there's just no drive in this government to make it happen. Um, if you want to bring about change, you actually need a minister to make it happen. And in the, this area of the National Disability Strategy, it requires a lot of uh, effort to engage a lot of your ministerial colleagues both at the Commonwealth level and the states. Because a lot of these services, of course, are delivered by the states. Health, education, the justice system. We know there's an enormous amount of work to be done in the justice system. Transport, another hugely important issue, and so on. Uh, so all of the issues that are in the National Disability Strategy are all there because, of course, people with disability have um, lives that intersect with all of these different areas of service delivery and all of them are important. Um, so, you know, once again, get in there and drive it. Um, make sure that in each area, health, education, transport, justice, employment and so on, recreation, um, make sure that in each area you're working with people with disability to get improvements in every area. Um, I, I really think you have to, that was the point of the National Disability Strategy, not to choose one thing, but to really recognise that people's lives are whole um, and uh, we need improvements across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Lots of people with disability and their families are really worried about the rates of violence and abuse experienced by people with disability. Um, one of our supporters, for example, sent in a question about working with children checks for taxi drivers. You've said if you win government, you will hold a royal commission into the abuse and violence experienced by people with disability. What do you hope that a royal commission will achieve? And what are the kinds of things that you want to see changed? Yeah. So first and foremost, of course, uh, the reason that we've committed to um, having a Royal Commission into the abuse of people with disability is because we know from the evidence that the level of abuse is uh, far too high and much higher than for people in other circumstances. So uh, it is because the situation is so serious. So um, that's why we need to do it. And of course that may, and we hope uh, through the Royal Commission to uh, of course, give people um, a voice to have their um, uh, the abuse uh, understood uh, and for the community to better understand the nature and extent of the abuse. Uh, but also, as we've recently seen with the final report of the Royal Commission into Child Sexual Abuse in Institutions, um, what we see from that final report and all the recommendations, more than 400 recommendations that go to so many aspects, um, governments, federal, state and institutions then are confronted by very real proposals about what needs to be done. Working with children checks is but one. Uh, so we don't have a national working with children check, for example. Uh, so it, different states have different checks. Uh, they, they um, of course, people move from one state to the other, uh, but also the level of protection is different. So that's just one issue. There's a whole range of recommendations that have come out of the uh, Child Abuse Royal Commission that's, um, that go to the criminal justice system a whole range that go to the way institutions operate. Um, there's, uh, I think the, the great thing about a Royal Commission is that it has the opportunity to really look in depth at uh, the nature of the abuse, where it's taking place, the systemic issues that need to be changed, the legal issues that need to be changed, and of course the individual uh, people who 
uh, need to have the opportunity to come forward for their own cases to be pursued. Um, as we've had with the Child Abuse Royal Commission, uh, individual cases have now been referred to the police. Um, there are cases in court now um, where people are being pursued, uh, where I would hope perpetrators will go to jail um, and people will get justice. Uh, the whole question of redress is in the Parliament, uh, so a redress scheme uh, is being finalised. Um, there, there are issues with what the government's proposed, but um, of course the fundamental issue is that people are entitled to redress. Uh, so there, the, a Royal Commission can really facilitate um, uh, the most serious uh, attention to these questions. You've been in Parliament for a little while now, um, more than 20 years. You first entered Parliament in 1996 and you've held a huge variety of roles. Um, how do you maintain your passion? You know, how do you get up every Monday morning and face flying to Canberra again? Um, I get very um, angry about the uh, attacks on um, um, vulnerable people. Um, I, I found the uh, way in which this government uh, pursues uh, people who are disadvantaged, people who can't find work, um, people with disability, uh, the way in which uh, pe people on, as they, as they describe it, as the Conservatives describe it, people on welfare, uh, they describe in a demeaning way. Um, I find it really, frankly, enraging and uh, so I don't have any difficulty. Um, uh, it's, there is such a fundamental difference in view uh, my view is that if you can't find work or if you are unable to work for all sorts of reasons, uh, then you are entitled to support. That, that's what a civilised society like ours has agreed to do. And one of the wonderful things uh, that i found in this very difficult period while people on social security have been attacked by this government has been the way in which the Australian people have said, uh, no, actually, we think uh, it is our responsibility to come together and look after each other. And um, I, I think that's been uh, a very positive uh, response to a very nasty um, uh, way of attacking those who really um, deserve our support. Thanks very much for your time, Jenny. We really appreciate it. My pleasure.